Good afternoon, Manitoba. I'm Larry McIntosh, and I'll be your host for the next hour. Now, normally, Food and Friends airs on Saturday mornings from 8 to 9, but we had the honour of being asked to do a special show for this Holiday Monday. So, happy Holiday Monday, and thank you for tuning in. I want to remind you that Peak of the Market is on Twitter. Please follow us at Peak of the Market for recipes and Food and Friends guest updates. We have over 225,000 Twitter followers, and we'd love to have you follow us too. Again, we're at Peak of the Market, or you can follow me at Larry McIntosh. My guest this afternoon is Rick Frost, CEO of the Winnipeg Foundation. Good afternoon, Rick. Great to be here, Larry. How are you doing? I'm just doing fabulous. Thank you. It's a long weekend. How bad could we be doing, really? (laughs) Not too badly, that's for sure. So the Winnipeg Foundation, I think almost everybody's heard of the Winnipeg Foundation, but I'm not sure everybody understands what you do. Maybe you could take some time to explain. Well, sure. Uh, Probably the best way to explain who we are and how we operate is a little bit of our history. And uh, back in 1921, 94 years ago, Back in 1921, a prosperous banker gave $100,000 to the city, effectively, and said, here's $100,000. But the condition was that you couldn't spend the capital. All you could do was spend the income that was earned off it. So in 1922, we made $6,000 in grants, which were our first grants, basically the $6,000 in interest they'd earned from the $100,000 investment. So basically, that's how we got started. And I think the second gift is equally important. Um, It came in in 1924. It was $15 from an anonymous donor, a widow. It just says the widow's mite on the uh, the envelope that we still have in the office. Hmm. Um, And that basically said it's not the size of the gift, but the giving that matters. You know, small gift, uh, $15 versus the first gift, which was $100,000. And that really created the first two funds, these endowment funds that we have been building up. And now we have about 3,000 endowment funds. Each of them invested in the same way that $100,015 was invested back 90 years ago. Um, And every year it generates income. And that money is given back to the community. Last year we contributed about $23 million. This year it will be closer to $25 million from the income that we're earning. And we made grants last year to uh, 860 different charities. So there's a lot of charitable work in the city going on in every area from, you know, buying cellos for the orchestra to, you know, sending kids on scholarships. So there's just a wide variety of things happening in the city that we're able to support because of these endowments that we invest in and basically take the income every year and spend it in the city. So, so that's interesting because even that first donation way back when is still paying money out to grant, grants today. Absolutely. Absolutely. When people make uh, applications or when organizations make applications to the Winnipeg Foundation for support, one of the funds we can go to is back to Mr. Alloway's first fund and, and say, you know, here uh, we've got some money income off that fund this year, so how are we going to spend it? And so it basically generates income. The income goes to support the community. Um, so it's a, there's lots of very interesting stories about, about, how, it, about how all that works, but that's the mechanics. And, and that, that, that to me is amazing because that's going to be an ongoing thing for, for generations and generations yeah. because that money is vest, invested. Yep. And I'm, I'm assuming you're probably like my RSP. Some years it does better than others. Absolutely. And, but you can invest that back in the community. You said 20 some million this year. Yes, that's uh, so a large, uh, large amount of money that gets invested back because the pool keeps getting bigger, as you can appreciate. Even uh, we went through 2008, and I think everybody remembers how nasty that was in the investment markets, but we didn't really overall cut our grants because we've got formulas that stabilize these things. So okay. it's not just ex- back in 1921 and 22, it's exactly what you earned, but today we average market values and we do all kinds of equalization of things to basically steady it out so okay. that it's... Um, uh, it's it's quite predictable in terms of how it's going to grow over time, but absolutely, it's a it's a marvel and it's a great legacy that the way it was set up back. In, we're the first in Canada. There's no other foundations in 1921 like that, and so uh, le- there's now 191 foundations across Canada that are like the Winnipeg Foundation. But back then, of course, we were the first one. So if you're a, a business or individual, or some people I think have put you in their wills um, and donate to the uh, to a fund, and you can specify what you, area you'd like it to be covered. Right? Absolutely, yep, yep. So, but the, the neat thing about that, and I'm sure I repeat myself here, the neat thing about that, it's not just I gave ten thousand dollars to win a big harvest this year. It's going to be 
okay, Harvest is going to get 10000 this year, but they're going to get X amount of dollars every year every for year. a whole right. bunch of time. We had a really interesting meeting just the other week with a church group. Um, was, uh, had a, there was a donor in, 19, I think, 1978 who left $12,000 to the Winnipeg Foundation to benefit this church group. Well, today that fund's worth something like uh, thirty five or 38000 So the 12000 has grown from investments. It's generating fifteen to $1,800 a year uh, back to the church. And so when you look at it, Sort of historically, in the last decade, they've had about fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars in grants um, from this twelve thousand dollar fund. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting the way it's uh, the way it, it's worked out. But uh, so that's just an example of endowments that have been created over the years, um, and all those endowments are still working hard and serving the people of Winnipeg. So that that's a great it's a great way of doing it, and obviously helps a lot of people every year. And that's, that's, I'm going to go back to that again. It's a whole bunch of, how many organizations did you help last year? Well, we were in, yeah, 860 different organizations with grants. A number of grants, of course, can be much larger. University of Manitoba gets many of them because we were, you know, to doing scholarships at University okay. of Winnipeg and that sort of thing. So there's many grants. But in terms of individual organizations, 860 different organizations. So it's, yeah, it has big reach because a lot, donors have a lot of interest. Every donor has got their own idea about how to support the community and, that, of course, puts you in touch with all kinds of different charities. So is there one particular area you, f- you focus on more than others? Is there something that you see more? I don't more think of? so. Yeah. I, you know, social justice is a big issue for us, obviously. You know, trying to, make, trying to make sure that everybody has an equal opportunity in society. And there's a lot of our donors who care about that. But, um, and, and so when you, when you look at that, education uh, as a big, uh, big focus. Uh, a lot of donors want scholarships or funds that support education, mm-hmm. which probably has a bit of a social justice tinge to it if you think about the value of education. But then there's the arts and there's the environment and the heritage. You know, you go through the whole list of uh, health and hospitals and, you know, various diseases. And obviously my church or my religious organization or whatever, there's just a very wide range of where these endowments are, are benefiting. We're speaking with Rick Frost, CEO of uh, the Winnipeg Foundation. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back. I'm Larry McIntosh. Normally, Food and Friends airs on Saturday mornings from 8 to 9, but we had the honor of being asked to do a special show for Holiday Monday. So thanks for joining us. Food and Friends Radio is also on TV. Each radio show is filmed, and we'll be posted on mytoba.ca later today. So if you want to see the, prev- the TV version of this or previous radio shows, please visit mytoba.ca. You can also listen to an audio podcast of Food and Friends at soundcloud.com and at the iTunes store. So please just do a search for Food and Friends with Larry at mytoba.ca or soundcloud.com or at the iTunes store, and all the shows will come up for your listening or a viewing pleasure. So if you're not a regular listener to Food and Friends Saturday mornings at 8, you can go back and listen to the last 256 shows on SoundCloud or watch many of them on mytoba.ca. We're back with Rick Frost, CEO of the Winnipeg Foundation. During the break, we were talking about something that I'm quite excited about, nourishing potential. And tell us a little bit about what you're doing there. Well, it's a program that started four or five years ago, um, we gathered a number of uh, youth-serving organizations together and we talked about, you know, where are the gaps? Because everybody knows that there's lots of programs in the city, but there's always some holes and gaps in, in programming and whatever. And we're told that after-school programming is a problem in terms of teaching kids about having healthy, making healthy choices, in terms of um, augmenting the food budget so that the snacks that are provided are healthier snacks. Um, there are some issues around some of the organizations that do after-school programming have uh, storage problems, like they need better fridges and uh, perhaps stoves and various things like that, equipment-type type situations, and also some uh, s- s- staff training or uh, training around uh, good, healthy choices again. So we put this together into a new program called Nourishing Potential, and we said, okay, we've got two goals here. In the next five years, we're going to grant a million dollars in this area. So over the next five years, that was our plan. And secondly, we're going to build a $5 million endowment fund that will sustain two hundred dollars to $250,000 every year from now on. So more or less in line with how we build endowments and invest money and create income. So here we are. We started our first grants in May 2011. So we're four years and two months since we made our first program grants. Since then, we've granted uh, to 73 different charities in Winnipeg through Nourishing Potential. 
Um, $885,000 is out the door. So by the end of the year, we will hit the million dollars. So I'm happy to say, I'm absolutely confident we'll hit that million dollars by the end of this year. That's a big achievement in itself. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, donors have been giving us money to uh, build this endowment fund so that we can sustain this program because that's part of our philosophy is all about sustainability. Um, so the idea is to build this fund, and the fund is now over $4 million. We've had about uh, $3.4 million in contributions, but because the money's invested in the markets and earning money, the, the actual market value of the fund is now over $4 million, and during the summer we're hoping to build it up a little bit more, and eventually we'll get it to $5 million, um, and that will be enough to... Um, to sustain, as I say, about two hundred to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in grants every year, which will go out in grants of five or six thousand dollars to different youth-serving organizations. So it's a very sustainable plan. Um, certainly having piles of impact. I mean, you can see it in a whole bunch of different ways. But um, I, th I think the the encouraging thing is that um, we know we're getting more awareness around this issue uh, just by doing a program like this. It's and certainly, as you know, Jonathan Taves has been our ambassador this summer, so it's uh, really helping us to raise profile. And, and when you launched this, going back, and I can't quite believe it's that long ago, you and I first talked about this. It speaks to Shelly, my wife, Shelly, obviously, for those that may not know, Shelly and I, we said, you know, this is a great program. I mean, it really is a fantastic program. Recently, Shelly and I made a small donation towards it, as you know, because we think it just makes a whole bunch of sense. I mean, to have a good future, you need to have nutrition. You need to be able to know how to eat properly. You need to be, have those things that some of us take for granted. Right. And the fact that Jonathan Taves, the Chicago Blackhawks, you know, captain, number 19, the Stanley Cup winner, many, twice at least, three, three times, three, three times. times. That's, right. that's right. He's got another one. Um, is involved. Is incredible that you, the momentum you have going here, they're going to help a lot of people. Well, thank, uh, that's right. And I uh, thank you and Shelly, and I thank Peak of the Market, because Peak of the Market made a gift, what, four years ago, I think, when we first started this uh, whole this whole uh, program. And it's because of, you know, donors who put in a little bit of money here and then, the larger donors come in, and, and uh, we've had good support from organizations, some large organizations like Wawanese Insurance and Centerpoint Credit Union. You know, the Jets have been uh, supportive. The province mm -hmm. has been supportive for sure. Um, City of Winnipeg. So we've had some large, larger donors who, who helped build the capital. The Winnipeg Foundation, of course, is setting aside some capital in this area as well. So if you can build up a pool of money, like $5 million, and then you got it invested, you know that that money is like an R, as you say, an RSP, except a very nice RSP. Right. We all wish we could have something like that, right? But, um, you know, if you could put a $5 million into investments and know that the income off that every single year is going into this area, over a period of time, you're going to have a big impact on a lot of organizations and certainly on a lot of kids. And so the, so it's a sustainable strategy. And I think the thing I like about it is when we get it in place and we got this fund established, you know, we can maybe turn our attention to something else like literacy or other types of issues that face the city, knowing that we've sort of got a pool of money that's working in, in this area. So um, it's I'm not saying that the problem's going to go away, but at least we've got a, a solution there that's that's working away and helping. So you have a campaign going on where people can donate right now, and the easiest way to donate is to text. And I just did this the other day, first time I've ever done this. You text, you put in your phone as the phone number, I guess, text 45678. So pretty simple to remember, 45678. Right. And then in the text message part, you just put the word goal. Right. And it'll you, you're automatically donating five dollars that'll be charged to your phone bill. So to me, this is very easy. So you just text four five six seven eight, and in the text message, put goal. You donate five dollars. It, it sends you a quick text back saying confirm, and I think you put yes, and then you've donated five dollars. Very simple to do. But if we can get some people to do this, at, at all, it's it's supporting you know, the program, but it's also supporting some money and not a ton of money, right? It's yep. the price of an expensive coffee these days, really. That's for five dollars. That's right. What we're trying to do, is, of course, is raise awareness. I mean, uh, you know, we obviously get larger gifts than that, but if you can raise awareness, because feeding kids and healthy choices, that's a whole community issue. I mean, everybody can chip in a little bit. And that's basically what we're trying to do is raise awareness that this is an issue in our city. We've got a lot of kids who are hungry and don't get the proper nutrition that they need. And this is a way to sort of participate, you know, without breaking the bank, more or less. So we've, uh, we've introduced this uh, a whole new experiment for us. We'll be right back with Chris, Rick Frost, the CEO of the Winnipeg Foundation. After the Welcome back. I'm Larry McIntosh. I'm speaking with Rick Frost, CEO of the Winnipeg Foundation. Before the break, we're talking about uh, nourishing potential. And we'll get that right one of these times. 
And we said that if you texted 45678 on your cell phone, obviously, and put in a text message goal, $5 will be automatically added to your phone bill, and that goes towards the Nourishing Potential campaign, which right. everybody can help $5 at a time, which all adds up, plus it supports the campaign. What we just decided off air, breaking news, if you do this by 2 o'clock today, Peak of the Market will match your donation dollar for dollar, so up to $1,000 in total. So if you donate $5, Peak of the Market will match that as long as you do before 2 o'clock today, up to $1,000. Thank you very much, Larry. That's just fabulous. Thank you. And we'll be right back after this break with Rick Frost, CEO from the Winnipeg Foundation. Welcome back to Food and Friends. I'm Larry McIntosh. Normally, Food and Friends airs on Saturday mornings from 8 to 9. But we had the honor of being asked to do a special show for this Holiday Monday. So thank you for joining us and happy Holiday Monday. I hope you've marked your calendar for Peak of the Market's 17th Annual Family Fun Day. It will be on Thursday, August 20th. So we hope you're going to be there. This is what's going to be happening. There's going to be a free potato pancake breakfast, free pork and a bun, uh, potato salad and cold slaw lunch, free pony rides, petting zoo, popcorn, a giant slide, bouncers, and a lot more. And you know what? The Minion mascots will be dropping by, as well as Goldie and Goldette from the Winnipeg Gold Eyes. Everything's absolutely free with any donation to Variety, the Children's Charity of Manitoba. So this is an annual event, as I said, but any donation, whether that's $2 or $20, whatever you can afford, that's going to go all, 100% of it's going to go to Variety, the Children's Charity of Manitoba, and it's going to be a fun day for kids and adults alone. We're also doing tours of our new distribution center, uh, which uh, we'd renovated last year, and it has 14-foot high robots that so you can watch them packing potatoes. Anyway, Peak of the Market 17th Annual Family Fun Day is thir- Thursday, August 20th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. at our location at 1200 King Edward Street in Winnipeg. We're back with Rick Frost, CEO of the Winnipeg Foundation. We were talking off air about nourishing potential during the break, but you have some stories you can share. That this is a, this is for the, if you weren't on before. This is a campaign that you're putting on to help kids. Uh, I'll, I'll let absolutely. you explain it better. Well, yeah, absolutely. We're trying to augment food budgets of youth-serving organizations, and and uh, and obviously teach kids about healthy choices. And in, in the process, it's been a great campaign for the last five weeks. We're having good success, I think, in raising awareness of the program. And feeling very good about it. One of the questions that I've been asked, though, is um, like, what are the side effects of nourishing potentials? Things that we didn't expect uh, to come out of it because we knew we were going to buy more food. We knew we were going to teach kids how to cook it and things like that. But one of the interesting things, Larry, is um, that kids are getting food handler certificates. And we didn't expect this necessarily. It's one of the surprises. Um, Organizations, and as I say, we've been in 73 organizations with grants now. They're using some of the money. Um, to teach who, teach the kids basically how to handle food. And there's a certificate that you need if you want to, you know, even serve uh, tea and cookies in a church basement, you need a food handler certificate today. Right. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> so what they're doing is teaching these kids the basics of, of food handling. They're getting their food handler certificate. And the, I think the fabulous thing about this is that it gives you a real leg up when you go to get a job. Supposing you're 14, 15, 16 years old and you're looking for that first job. Mm-hmm. Every little qualification counts and, and, and matters in sort of a lot of the neighborhoods and areas that we're working in are kids that are maybe a little more disadvantaged than other parts of the city. And so I think it's just one of the surprising outcomes of the program is um, this educational aspect that uh, really wasn't in the, in the early uh, thinking. Um, and the net result is I'm thinking that, uh, you know, it's going to be maybe some kids who get a job just because of these nourishing potential grants that we've put out there. So it's a side effect, side benefit, I think is fabulous. And, and, and I think you have to have lots of stories that how this is affecting. Because the interesting thing to me from what you were saying before is these aren't, you know, huge donations or grants, I guess you would call it. Uh, but so these almost would slip through the cracks because, they're you know, you need $5,000 to do this, $2,000 to do that. A lot of that wouldn't be looked at by a lot of organizations, but you can help. You're helping a lot of different organizations with this fund. Yeah, it's interesting. Small grants, I often think, have greater impact than big grants. I mean, we all, everybody likes, you know, this year the Winnipeg Foundation made a $500,000 grant to the Manitoba Museum. There's a hotel, the Merchant's Hotel down on Selkirk that's being converted into a sort of a community center with some housing. We made a $600,000 grant there. And I know those grants are really important. You've got to do big grants once in a while. But the reality is that 
$2,000, $5,000 placed in a good organization for something like Nourishing Potential, it has huge impact. Um, really, it empowers organizations to do their job better. And, uh, we're, you know, we're very convinced that, uh, you know, $25,000 uh, grants can be just as effective and oftentimes more effective than one $100,000 grant, if you know what I mean. I, so, w- I, w- I would agree with that. There's probably some organizations that – Avoid that because there's a bit of paperwork involved or a little thing, you, yeah. you know, whether that's government or not government. So I, I, I admire what you guys are doing with this well, program. Yeah, we're, trying to, we're trying to put it out strategically and mm-hmm. get it into the hands of people so they can do their job better. We're not trying to create any new programs. I mean, one of the things people ask me is nourishing potential about creating new programs. And really, it's not. It's really about trying to help um, the many organizations. We have fabulous organizations already in Winnipeg. Try to help them to do a better job. So if you're interested in getting involved in this, what's the website if they want to see more information? What's your website? Well, just go to Winnipeg Foundation or winnipegfoundation.com. It's all the WPGFDN.org. You got them all. All, the, all those things you can find us. So you, you can go there and you can make a donation to this. But the easiest way to do it, as far as I'm concerned, is just text 45678, 45678, and in your text message put GOAL, and you'll donate $5 on your phone bill to... Uh, nourishing potential, which I think is great. So, And if you do that by 2 o'clock today, Peak of the Market Growers are going to match your donation dollar for dollar. So text your message, 45678. Put in the text message goal. You'll get a message back asking you to confirm it. And uh, we will match that dollar for dollar up to $1,000 between now and 2 o'clock. So That's I encourage fabulous. you to do it. It's it's, it's a it's price of a coffee. That's right. It's cheaper That's than a movie. You're helping, <laughs> you're helping out our organization. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Larry. It's a great uh, idea. Oh, uh, our pleasure. And we'll see, we'll see what comes We'll see how many people are out there listening. I'm hoping there's at least 200 people that do this, and that means we'll have to donate $1,000. That would be be fantastic. Oh, yeah, it would be fabulous. Fabulous. So is there uh, other stories that you're thinking about when you uh, think about nourishing? Well, all the organizations that we work with have their own stories. Um, And and I think a lot of it is like cooking clubs um, that get involved. I think one of the things I find interesting is that organizations may be teaching art lessons or, you know, sports or those kinds of computers, whatever it might be, say that after school, kids are hungry. So when they come in, if you try to say, let's, let's do this or let's do that, they say, first of all, what's to eat? Mm-hmm. It's a very common question after school. And so I think that we're hearing a lot of stories about how that has an impact on the effectiveness of their program. And effectiveness of their program, effectiveness of how they learn, uh, so many things that having a solid meal and knowing how to prepare it sets you up for in life. Absolutely. Lots of evidence of it, too. We're speaking with Rick Frost, CEO of the Winnipeg Foundation. We'll be right back after this Welcome back. I'm Larry McIntosh. Normally, Food and Friends airs on Saturday mornings from 8 to 9, but we had the honor of being asked to do a special show for this Holiday Monday. So, happy Holiday Monday, and thank you for joining us. Peak of the Market growers have been very busy harvesting. Here's a list of Manitoba-grown vegetables that are available right now at your local store. And this is quite a bit of vegetables, but I'm hoping you're going to go out and go buy them this afternoon. So, the available right now, green beans, beets, broccoli, green, red, and savoy cabbage, cauliflower, cucumbers, kale, leeks, shallots, green and yellow zucchini, as well as red potatoes. So a couple of them here, like broccoli, there's a bit of a shortage right now across North America, broccoli, so you better go buy some. We're not out, but there, a lot of areas are, don't have a lot of broccoli right now for some reason. It's that uh, growing thing. Yellow zucchini, we've never grown that before. That's a first for us. And now carrots are also being starting to arrive in your store. Now, the rain that we had last week slowed down the carrot harvesting, but I think we're back to normal now, so you'll see lots of peak of the market carrots in your store. So lots of vegetables available. Please remember, if it says peak of the market on the label, it is guaranteed to be grown right here in Manitoba. We're back with Rick Frost, CEO of the Winnipeg Foundation. Jonathan Taves, who's involved in your Nourishing Potential campaign, I bet eats a lot of vegetables. Uh, Absolutely. You talk to him. I mean, he really pays attention uh, to what he eats. He's very genuinely uh, interested in healthy choices for kids. Uh, Very interesting fellow to talk to. You know, you think about this. uh, He burns 2,000 to 2,500 calories in a game, in a hockey game. So you'd say, well... Before a game, he's going to be eating, you know, pasta and steaks or whatever else it is. I sort of, what do you eat before a game? Well, he's talking about his salads and fruits and vegetables, hmm. all the things that you would love to hear, Larry. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. It's I'm great. loving this. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, uh, yeah, he's very interested in in ma- making the right choices and uh, very knowledgeable, uh, very interesting and genuine, genuinely authentic kind of personality. You know, 
And if you're interested in donating to the Nourishing uh, Campaign, you can text 45678. That's 45678. And put your text message GOAL, and $5 will be donated to come off your phone bill. And if you do it before 2 o'clock today, Peak of the Market Growers will match that dollar for dollar up to $1,000. So one more time, text 45678. That's the phone number. And then in the uh, text messages, put GOAL, and $5 will come off your phone bill, and we'll match it dollar for dollar if you do it by 2 o'clock today. So the Winnipeg Foundation has a lot of funds. How can people get involved with the Winnipeg Foundation? Well, Larry, you know, it's, uh, we've got about 3,000 funds. 3,000, that's a lot of funds. That's right. Over 20, 94 years, you can build them up. And, uh, you know, individuals of all walks of life have created funds. Uh, you know, you can start a fund with $2,500, and you can even do that over five years. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be a huge amount of money. People can get started and, and start to build their fund. There's a lot of reasons for working with the, with the Winnipeg Foundation. I mean, we have very creative and flexible structures about creating an endowment fund. Um, so there, we're not we're not living with hard and fast rules around uh, various technical things that we'd have to obviously take more time to explain. Right. The foundation has very deep knowledge. As I say, last year we were in 860 different organizations. So in terms of working with donors who want to know about you know issues like mental health or sending kids to summer camp or whatever, however far ranging your interests are, we have a lot of staff on uh, around who really have good good knowledge in that respect. We've got a great investment track record, 16% return last year, 14% the year before that. So people who are interested in, That's I right. want my money to be well invested. The Winnipeg Foundation, I think, is a great choice. And again, the whole issue of permanence and stability. I mean, we've got a 94-year track record in the city. So I hope, you know, if anybody, of any of your listening audience is, uh, is uh, interested in ex- exploring the idea of... Um, Maybe a planned gift that doesn't have to be now can also be incorporated into your will. Um, we certainly would love to hear from them and, and talk about just how does it work. Um, hard thing, I think, for the foundation is just to get in front of an audience, you know, and let people know what we do and how we do it. I, people know us best for our grant making because we're all over the place, but those grants are only possible because of the donors who've, uh, who've given us the resources over the years. So, so it's both ends of the spectrum, more or less, is a key interest of ours. So I just want to go back a bit. So if you wanted to start a fund, you don't need $3 million to do that? No, no. You can start, you can start a family fund at $2,500, so $2,500. Wow. That would be an undesignated fund. It's not, you know, you don't get to control where the money's going exactly. Um, you can start to put conditions on it at $10,000. So there's different rules around sort of how it works, but there's flexibility around some of those rules as well. Hmm. It really depends what the donor's trying to do. And as I was saying earlier in the show, donors are very different. I mean, we have got so many different kinds of people who are interested in different things about our community. And uh, our our vision is a Winnipeg where community life flourishes and a flourishing community has so many different aspects to it. Um, and donors take an interest in all those different things. So we work with people uh, in all kinds of different areas as a result. And saying you and I have had conversations at, at lunches and dinners and on, you've been on the show before, but I, I was under the impression you'd have to have a lot more to start off a fund than that. So that, that's very interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. We've got, of the 3,000 funds, the median, the median fund is about $20,000. So half of our funds are less than $20,000 in terms of invested capital. Now, the market value of those funds is higher because, truth to tell, if you give us money, um, five, ten years ago, you gave us ten thousand dollars. Five years ago, it's not going to be ten thousand today. It's going to be eleven thousand or twelve because we're trying to build the capital on the one hand, so it keeps up so our purchasing power is protected over the long run. Right. And at the same time, we want to grant between four and five percent every year. So it's, you know, we can explain how spending policies work and that sort of thing, but. Um, you know, it's a, we've been in the business a long time, and it's uh, fun to work with donors because you can appreciate um, they're very caring people. I mean, they really care about the city, and it's fun to sort of work with them because the money that they do generate from their investment goes right back into organizations that we were talking about earlier doing fabulous work in the city. So it's a, it's a sort of intermediary between the two, a great job. So, so would you say if someone's interested, the first thing to go to website, your website, Winnipeg yep. Foundation website, you get some information. But I would say if you're serious about it, you're going to need to sit down and have a conversation with some of your, Absolutely. your co-workers. Absolutely. Give, right? give us a call. If you, certainly, we have a book called Giving Well. Unfortunately, we're on radio. You can't see it. but Looks great, though. <laughs> it's uh, right here. It's, um, but uh, nonetheless, it's, uh, you know, it sort of gives you a bit of an inter- introduction. Okay. And then we have, as I say, we have a number of staff who are very knowledgeable working with uh, 
with potential donors. Uh, and as I say, it doesn't have to be today. It can be in your will. So different people have different approaches, uh, but certainly we would love to talk to any of member of your audience about the different opportunities and how you work in an endowment structure, um, which is basically the core business of the foundation. We're speaking with Rick Frost, CEO of the Winnipeg Foundation. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Food and Friends. Please join me next Saturday, August 8th at 8 a.m. when my guest will be Lisa Dick from Cornell Cream. Cream. Lisa will make ice cream using milk and cream from her family's farm right here in Manitoba. My guest today has been Rick Frost, CEO of the Winnipeg Foundation. This is always interesting hearing about it, but today we spent a lot of time talking about nourishing nursing potential campaign that you have going on right now. I encourage people to text 45678 and put in the text message goal. $5 will come off your phone bill. If you do that before it, uh, it's 2 o'clock today, Peak of the Market Girls will match it dollar for dollar. And so. thank you very much, Larry, if you and Shelly for being donors personally. But in addition to that, Peak of the Market has been with us since the last four years as a sponsor and a supporter, and we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Rick, for being on Food and Friends. Take care, everybody. Enjoy your holiday Monday. And please, don't forget to eat your veggies.